So uh, this is the first uh, kind of uh, topic in this course on universal human values, <coughs> the foundation course on universal human values. And so we have started with this, you know, trying to look into the need of value education, into the content, the basic guidelines of value education. And in the light of these guidelines, the content and process of value education. So we'll try to look into them one by one. The first and foremost thing is to understand what is, you know, values. So there's a lot of discussion about values and we are also going to discuss about values all through this course. So let's first find out what is values. Right. And then we will see this respect, you know, details to live with human values and to live with happiness and to live with fulfillment. Right. <clears throat> so if we look at what is valuable, what is values, the simple definition is whatever is valuable, you know, is my value. So if I look at anything, whatever is valuable in that thing, right, that is the value of that thing. What I mean is this, that every unit that I see has a definite role to play has a definite participation right, in its larger order. That participation is the value of that particular unit. Right. For example, if I see a pen, uh, you know, a marker in the classroom, it has a definite role to play. It has a definite participation in the classroom. It is used for writing on the whiteboard. Okay. So the role of this board, this white, uh, this marker, this pen, is to write on the whiteboard. So if you look at this pen in the classroom, it has a definite participation. It has a definite role. Right? And that is the value of that pen. So the value of that pen is to write on the whiteboard in the classroom. Right? If we are making this use of this particular pen for writing on the whiteboard, right? It is fulfilling, serving its values. If you use that pen to throw and hit at this student, then it is not, you know, fulfilling its values. We are not using that pen for its value. And that is what is misuse of it. So right utilization would mean that I'm using it for the value it is, it has. The participation it has to fulfill. So you can see people, you know, the teachers throwing chalk at the student. But this is not the right utilization. The chalk is supposed to be written, you know, it's supposed to be used for writing on the blackboard. So value of a thing is its participation in the larger order, its role in the larger order. So this is a very simple definition of value. Right? So this pen is valuable for writing on the whiteboard. This chalk is valuable for writing on the blackboard. Right? So that is the value of a pen. That is the value of a chalk. Now what we are saying that if you look at this, you know, 
in the context of this nature, this existence, then every unit in nature has a definite role to play, has a definite participation. That is the value of that particular unit. For example, if you look at the water in the context of animals and human beings, the definite participation of water for animals, for human beings, is to quench the thirst. And that is the value of the water. So, whatever be the larger context, larger order in which this unit is there in nature, it will have a definite participation, it will have a definite role. And that is the value of that unit. If we can understand this value in this in these terms, then we can also look into the role of human being in this nature, in this existence. We can look into the participation of human being in this nature, in this existence. And whatever is that participation, that is the value of a human being. And that is what we are calling as human values. That is what we are calling as human values. So if we look at this human, human being, right, at different levels of human existence, right, higher and higher orders of human existence, then we can see what is the participation what is the role and that will be the value of human being in that particular level of order. So we can see here at the level of individual, I have a role within myself. For example, ensuring happiness in the self and health in the body. Now this is my role. I as a self has to uh, ensure Number one, a state of continuous happiness in the self. So this is my value. And I have to ensure the health in the body. Right. This is my value. <coughs> At the level of family, if we see, I have a role in my family. For example, I have the role of ensuring this feeling of relationship in the family. So this feeling of relationship is a value. And we, when we work out the details of these feelings, right, all those will turn out as the value for me in the family. Right? So that those will be the human values for a human being in the family. Similarly, when I look at the society, I have certain role to play in this society. For example, participating in the social systems for ensuring justice, peace and harmony and so on. Right? So that is my participation. That is my value right? as a human being. And when I look at the nature as a whole, the existence as a whole, I have a role in nature in existence. Right? And one of the role is ensuring mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature, with the trees, with the plants, with the soil, with the waters. Right, with the animals, with the human beings. Right? So I have this role, you know, to play. And all of them will turn out as human values. So very simple, you know, to understand what is valuable for me as a human being at different levels. And when I'm able to identify these roles, this participation, these are the ones which appear as human values for values for me as a human being. So this is about the values and now you can see the need for human values. If I have to live like a human being, I have to have these human values. So need for value education is there because we want to live with human values. 
right? Living with human values, we can be in a state of happiness, right? In a state of continuous happiness. And that is living with fulfillment. So we need values, human values, to understand them, to be with them, right? Because that is what will lead to my state of happiness, continuous happiness for myself. And I can work for the happiness of the other. Right. So only through ensuring human values, I can be in a state of harmony and happiness within. And I can be in a state of harmony and happiness with others. Right. And that will lead to fulfillment for myself and for others. Therefore, we need to understand human values. We need to be with that human values. Right? And in order to understand the human values and to practice and be with that human values, we need value education. So that is the need for value education, which we can all realize, you know, see within ourselves. So with this need, now when we try to implement you know, work on this value education. Right? How do we go about it? So in that reference, there are certain guidelines that we have been, you know, trying to work out. Right? And these are the four guidelines. There can be some more, but these four seem to be very essential and also very effective. Number one is that it has to be universal. Number two, it has to be rational. Number three, it has to be verifiable. And number four, it has to lead to harmony and not oppositions, contradictions. The first one is saying the content needs to be universal. That it, it needs to be applicable to all human beings right? and be true at all times, at all places. So it has to be universal. It has to be applicable for all human beings okay, at all times, in all places. As an alarm, it should not depend on sect, creed, nationality, race, gender, etc. Right. So it should not be limited to certain particular sect or certain particular caste or creed or nationality, but it has to be applicable to all human beings at all time in all places. Then only we can call it human values basically, right? So this is one of the guidelines for well education. Then it has to be rational, you know, through proper exploration, investigation, you know, through reasoning, okay, we should be able to reach to it. So it must be amenable to logical reasoning. It should not be based on blind beliefs. That's just the, you know, um, alarm. Third one, it has to be verifiable. That we should be able to verify it on our own right. And we'll see the details of what does it mean to be, you know, verifiable on our own right. right? So it has to be verifiable. Every one of us can verify it on our own right. In our, you know, own, through our own natural acceptance and through our own experiential living with it. So we'll talk about those details, but it has to be verifiable. It should not be asked, you know, we should not be asked to believe just because it is stated in this course or any such place, right? So if it is there, I can verify it for myself on my own right. So it has to be verifiable. And you can check, all of you can check this, whether these guidelines are, you know, desirable or not desirable. The fourth one is leading to harmony. So values has to enable us to live in peace and harmony within our own self as well as with others and others includes both human beings and rest of nature. In fact, if you look at the definition, 
it says participation in the larger order right or this all in the larger order and what it means that when it is playing its role it will lead to harmony right? it will lead to order so these values that we are talking about must lead to harmony harmony within and harmony with the world around harmony with the world around so at all levels of our being we can see these values and when we see these values and we live with this, those values it lead to harmony at these different levels at the level of self at the level of family society nature and so on so with this need that we have realized and this definition of values and with these guidelines now we can look into the content of value education and also the process of value education so if you look at the content of value education it has to be holistic and it has to be all encompassing so it has to be holistic and it has to be all encompassing which means it covers all levels of our being right our being as an individual as family as society as nature existence so if we look at our being as a human being we live as an individual as a member of the family as a member of the society as a unit in nature in existence so our content of well education has to cover all these levels of our being and at each level we can see the further details for example at the level of individual it has to cover all dimensions of our being right as an individual for example understanding you know, that we have been talking about in the first session you know, right understanding so it has to take care of the right understanding and ultimately the realization it has to take care of our thought right this feeling this thought you know, of relationship and then it has to take care of our behavior with human being and our work with rest of nature right so for example in thought we have to have the clarity right a state of resolution within not a state of confusion so <clears throat> it has to cover all levels of our being and in each level we have it has to cover all the dimensions so this is going to be the content of well education you know covering all aspects of our being you know as a human being at all levels of our being when we look at the process of well education you know we have been mentioning many times that we should be able to verify things on our own right okay, and not just take it as a belief you know as something given from somebody or some course or something you know so what we are saying is that we should be able to verify things on our own right and what it means for us is this so whatever is said here will be set as a proposal right whatever we are saying we are saying it as a proposal do not assume it to be true or false verify it on your own right and one of the simple way of verification is to ask your natural acceptance so on the basis of our natural acceptance we can verify right whether a given proposal is true or not true right whether it is true or not true for example when i say for human being you know it is natural to be in relationship now you can ask yourself whether it is naturally acceptable to be in relationship or in opposition in relationship the feeling of respect is natural is desirable you can ask yourself in your 
in a relationship, what is your natural acceptance? Feeling of respect or disrespect? Feeling of trust or distrust? So all this can be verified right at the level of natural acceptance. Each one of us can ask our you know, natural acceptance and get the answer. You don't have to look around. You know, don't have to ask other people. You have to ask yourself. So this is the first thing. That we verify it on the basis of our natural acceptance. Of course, we can go ahead and then verify it on the basis of our living with other human beings, with rest of nature. So that is the experiential validation that we will talk about. So when I'm living on the basis of this proposal with human being, when I'm behaving with human being on the basis of this, it leads to mutual happiness. Similarly, when I'm working with rest of nature on the basis of this proposal, it leads to mutual prosperity, mutual enrichment. If that is happening, then it is a right proposal. Otherwise, it is not a right proposal. So each proposal, I mean, whatever is give, said, is said as a proposal, which has to be verified by each one of us. And this verification can be done on our own right. So this is going to be the process of you know, well education. And if this is the process of well education, then certainly it has to proceed in the form of a dialogue and not monologue. Because if I have to place the proposal and you have to verify, you know, then of course there has to be a dialogue. And through dialogue we can evolve. It cannot be a monologue. An interesting thing about this is that when we start this process, it is started in, as a you know, dialogue between me and you between the one who is placing the proposal and the one who is listening and exploring into this proposal. But soon it will become a dialogue within the you know, listener. Okay. Because these questions which have been asked by the teacher is just asking this question to your natural acceptance. You realize that you can yourself ask this question to your own natural acceptance. And you will start doing that. And when you start doing that, then this is a dialogue within your own self. So whatever is going on in your imagination, you can ask this question about this thing, whether it is, a, it is something which is naturally acceptable to you or not naturally acceptable to you. For example, if you are thinking of taking revenge from someone, for two hours you do this, and at the end of you drop the idea. End of it, you drop the idea. Now you could, if you had asked this yourself, when you had this feeling, you know, thinking of taking revenge. Right at the base of it, you had a feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition. So feeling of opposition, of course. Now, if you had asked right in the beginning whether this feeling of opposition is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me, you would have got the answer. Right. And you would have also found that if there is a feeling which is not naturally acceptable to me, then with this feeling, I am in a state of contradiction within and unhappiness within. So if I can ask this question to myself, if I can establish this inner dialogue, then in the first place, I can verify that this feeling of opposition under which I'm thinking of opposition, taking revenge is not naturally acceptable to me. And therefore it is leading to unhappiness. So that dialogue can be established within. Right? And with that dialogue, I can see whether it is meaningful to continue with this feeling or not to meaningful to continue with this feeling. And if I can see this and do this, then I can get, get rid of all such, you know, undesirable feelings, undesirable thoughts that we keep having and keep suffering out of it. So two hours you think of taking revenge. At the end of it, you drop it. These two hours you were in a state of harmony within, happiness within or a state of contradiction within and unhappiness within. So we keep suffering like that. So what we are saying is that 
to begin with through this dialogue we will be able to establish a process of self exploration right but soon it will become a process in yourself a dialogue within yourself and once that dialogue within yourself this process of self exploration starts within yourself right? the purpose is served then it will go on then you will explore not only those proposals which we have made you know to begin with but you will now look into all those things that you come across in your life take each one of them as proposal and keep verifying them so this is basically the process right so the purpose of this course is to initiate this process of dialogue right dialogue with the so to help you to be self referential self confident right through this internal dialogue so that is the process of identification of course you can ask yourself whether this process is naturally acceptable to you right or you would like somebody else to give you the you know do's and don'ts the instructions about what to do and what not to do similarly you can ask yourself that the purpose of this course this value education which we have stated you know to understand the values and to live with values leading to state of happiness and fulfillment is that purpose you know useful desirable or not desirable so with this i think we can open to questions